Question number 71, drawn from mechanics and where collision is involved. Now, let's see here. It is found that if a neutron, so the first colliding particle is neutron, suffers an elastic collinear collision, so it's 1D collision, with deuterium, so this is another particle, at rest. That means the striker is the neutron and deuterium is the target that's at rest. Fractional loss of its energy is P sub D, the fractional loss in kinetic energy of neutron. And in the second case, while for its similar collision with carbon nucleus at rest, the fractional loss of energy is P sub C. So we need to calculate the value of PD and PC. So these are the option. So out of this, like if this is the correct answer, the first one would be, you know, PD, the second one would be PC. That is how we need to calculate. All right, now I expect that you have certain formula which are memorized. So in that particular situation, what I will be getting is, let's see, if I talk of elastic collision, the velocity of the particle after collision is m1 minus m2 u1 by m1 plus m2 and there is a second term as well which is 2 m2 u2 divided by m1 plus m2 because in both the situation we are supposed to calculate the fractional loss in kinetic energy of neutron so only v1 is required for us now since the target in case a which is deuterium case b is carbon nucleus is at rest in both the situation so what i will be getting is this particular thing would be coming out to be zero all right now let's go for case number e when neutron strikes a deuterium so m1 is m m2 will be 2m the deuterium so here what i will get is v1 is equal to m minus 2m that's going to be minus m divided by 3m multiplied by u so that's m u divided by 3m so that's straightforward u by 3 of course with a negative sign that should not be missed now let's try to calculate the loss in kinetic energy and that loss in kinetic energy had been represented by pd so the loss would be straightway if i go for the magnitude part is half m u square minus half m u square by 9 and let's just try to see what it says is that not only the loss you need to see the fractional loss of its kinetic energy therefore when we say the fractional loss i need to divide it by the initial kinetic energy one half m u square so this is pd the first part the calculation is quite a simple one you can cancel all this half and you'll get the calculation therefore now in the second case let's try to see let me take it a bit up in case number b the second particle is the carbon nucleus so m2 is going to be 12 m so here putting it in the similar formula you see v1 would be equals to m minus of 12 m divided by m plus of 12 m multiplied by u so that is going to be minus of 11 u by 13 so in the same way you can calculate pc the loss in kinetic energy divided by the original kinetic energy that's going to give the fractional loss in kinetic energy and you just need to calculate the value this is very very straightforward the final answer is going to be option number four there is no any other concept beyond it it's a simple arithmetic so what we finally conclude is for this particular question question number 71 the correct option is option number four time to proceed for question number 72 all right now it's time for question number 72 again another topic from magnetism so you see there are some topics where the questions are favorably being repeated all right the dipole moment of a circular loop carrying a current i is m and the magnetic field at the center of the loop is b1 so something like i have a current carrying loop and 
the dipole moment let me just show the current condition so the current could be taken in any possible direction and now it says the magnetic dipole moment is m so in that case what i can write is m is i multiplied by pi into r square since the number of turns have been taken to be 1 this is the magnetic moment and the magnetic field at the center is b1 that means if i have to calculate the magnetic field that's straight formula based question so mu naught i divided by twice of r all right now it says when the dipole moment is doubled by keeping the current constant so if i want to double the dipole moment and the current is constant it's crystal clear no surprise the radius has to be made root 2 times so the new radius would be root 2 times r just for the fact to double m now in this situation we need to calculate the magnetic field so the new magnetic field now is not a problem so b2 is going to be mu naught i divided by 2 root 2 times r and the question requires the ratio of b1 by b2 does it require any explanation i don't think so right so b1 by b2 is straightforward root 2 therefore the option for question number 72 is the second option all right let's move to question number 73 okay question number 73 from current electricity and that too from the experimental part so are you realizing the experimental part holds a very great importance now here is in a potentiometer experiment it is found that no current passes the null point through the galvanometer when the terminals of the cell are connected across 52 centimeter and in the second case if the cell is shunted by a resistance of 5 ohm a balance is found when the cell is connected across 40 centimeter of the wire so initially the balancing length for the null point is 52 and when a resistance of 5 ohm is shunted across the cell the new balancing point is 40 centimeter we need to calculate the internal resistance of the cell let's see let's quickly make a figure here to understand now in the first situation it is something like this all right so here is the potentiometer wire let me make it this is the you know potentiometer circuit i'll keep a battery here and this is the situation all right and here is the battery under consideration all right now let's see the situation is something like this the internal resistance of the battery let's say this has e this has small r and let me place the point for galvanometer and this is our very good old jockey so this is the galvanometer and yes even here is the internal resistance of the potentiometer battery so the driving circuit we are not interested on this initially the balancing length is 52 centimeter in the second situation what has been done is the cell has been shunted so let's try to see the same situation we need to make it here and here all right and here is the cell which has been shunted by a certain value let me just try to make all right so do not scale the figure exactly that's not allowed i need to keep that disclaimer and here is e this is r okay i need to put a galvanometer here this is our jockey and this is the resistance by which it has been shunted and please do not scale the figure that has to be very mandatorily that has to be said now what i will be doing here is initial length is 52 centimeter the lateral length is 40 centimeter 
I have already asked an excuse, so don't say that this length is longer. The figures are not to be scaled. This is 52 centimeter and this is 40 centimeter. Together wise, the shunt resistance has also been given, that is 5 ohm. And based on this particular data, we need to calculate the value of internal resistance. Well, it's a basic concept of the null point. The potential difference across this point and this point would be E when the galvanometer is showing zero deflection because the current is not there. So in the first case, what I can get is E would be equals to K times 52. So that let's call it as equation number one. Let's go for the second situation. This time, although galvanometer is showing zero deflection, still the current is flowing through the battery, it will be flowing through this path because this circuit is isolated, but this isn't. In other words, the potential difference between the two points here, this and this will not be equals to E because the current is flowing there. So by a very simple calculation, which I believe you would be doing it, you are hands on on that, E into 5 divided by 5 plus small r is the potential difference across this and that potential difference is equal to this and that value equals to k times 40. The constant k would be identical in case 1 and case 2. Now all you require is that you need to divide equation 1 by equation 2 and when you do it, the value of r is going to be 1.5 ohm. That's a very simple calculation and the correct option would be option number 1. So this particular question of mine of potentiometer question number 73 has correct option as option number 1. Alright, let's move to the next question.